very much. Rest in peace, Elijah Kifashi. Yeah, um, before we start um, fully, I'd like to call on to the high table um, Mrs. Davila Pedro, um, the marketing manager for Milayo Sports Management Company. Um, the assets bank representative that we have in our list, Ms. Moyo, Ms. Uh, yeah, yeah, come to the high table, please. Then also the Lagos State Chairman for the Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Debo Oshibu. Yeah, yeah we'll start this section with a brief remark from the GM of the Lagos, um, Asset Bank Lagos City Manor, and he's going to give us a brief of what to expect in the 2019 Asset Bank Lagos Manor. Good morning, good morning all. I think my job is very simple. Mr. Steve Osuji, 
um, the publisher of the book Not Too Old to Run. Please ask me one more. How many people will be surprised to hear that um, Mr. Shawore has participated in several marathons across the world? He has finished four marathon, um, uh, food marathon, and he has always been part of the biggest city marathon. He's going to share his experience with us going into the 2019 Assets Bank Lagos City Marathon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Right. Uh, I, I was uh, briefed before coming here not to introduce politics into my speech today. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have said that uh, the easiest way to conduct the 2019 election would have asked all the presidential candidates to come to the marathon. And see if you can survive the first four miles, then you vote for the person. Uh, uh, marathons are very, very important. You know, they are very political in nature. You know, cities like New York City where I've done marathons before, Miami, Philadelphia, rely on uh, marathons as uh, a revenue earner, particularly New York City and all over the world. So political decisions are necessary for successful marathons. But I'm talking to the media today and I want to ask if there's anybody within the media sitting here who's ever done a marathon before. Only one person. So two, all right. I have done eight marathons before, uh, before now, and including the Lagos uh, Marathon, uh, I think uh, a year 2017, yes. And uh, my experience was uh, amazing. Uh, but what I found out was that, yes, the coverage the marathon got was inadequate. And it was because the journalists first did not understand. A lot of journalists I met on the way did not understand the course. They didn't know where we were running through. The only place they knew was the third, I mean, the third Milan Bridge. After that, they had no idea. So it's important that you know the course of the marathon, where you know we're starting from and where we're ending. Uh, the second aspect of it is equipment. You know, I also did not see a lot of journalists who had the right equipment for the marathon. When you are you are chasing after someone who is running, you cannot be using conventional camera. You have to use things that are digital and you can catch up with them. I ran a marathon in New York and also covered it for myself. I had a camera on my wrist. Most of you don't have that. And you also have to be fit and agile as a journalist to be able to cover a marathon. So there should have been a training before now that makes it possible for you also to train for the marathon. Even if, to, if it is to just make sure that you can catch up with the runners. Because there's a lot to cover in the marathon. One other thing that I didn't see happen is that we, we didn't cover in the one that I attended the people who make the marathon. They're not the runners. They're the people who are watching on the sidelines everywhere you go. And by the nature of that, you will find out the diversity of supporters. You know, you find out that people who are running and covering and sharing in you know on the Korodu Road are different from when you get on the Todd Bellan Bridge where we were physically almost mobbed by area boys, you know, and this is, this is very true. The other thing I found is inadequate security for the Lagos Marathon, especially after you leave the areas that are popular. And this, was, this coverage was also not there because journalists were even afraid of certain, there were black spots on the marathon the last time. One was Oroshoki and immediately after you leave the Todd Milan Bridge, uh, some boys there who were mobbing people if they could. The third thing, I mean, another thing I saw was the fact that wherever there was inadequacy of, you know, hydration, apart from the top of the you could not find cold water. And I asked one of the organizers, why don't you use cold water? They said the doctor advised against it. If you are running at 27 degrees centigrade and you can't get cold water to cool yourself, then you are going to kill people. That's the truth. So. You want to make sure that you are not only covering what the marathon organizers are asking you to cover, but the flaws of the marathon so that they can improve on a yearly basis. There are over 20,000 participants, I don't know how many people are participating this year, but you find out that there are over 50,000 who are watching and following. That's a huge amount of participation from both runners and spectators that you cannot afford uh, to leave out. So this was my experience running in Lagos uh, Marathon uh, in 2007, uh, 17. 
But in other places that I've done it, I also discovered that journalists also are very clinical in determining which of uh, the causes are difficult, which ones are flat. I didn't see that in the coverage that happened in 2000 and subsequent ones and after that. You have to let people understand that when you get to a certain point, it is hard. And these are things that even should come even before the marathon so that people can be mentally prepared for it. The one the important thing I should say about marathon is that is one of the races I've ever done in sports that has to do with mental capacity. Because after the 20, after the 15, 16, 17, and 18 mile, you are pretty much running with your brain because the entire body is gone. You are out of salt because you see salt pouring out of your pores, you're losing salt, and then that affects your muscles and you have muscle cramps. If you're running as well as a journalist and you're covering this, you need glucose in your pocket on one side and you need salt in case you run out of salt and you have muscle cramps so that you can catch up uh, with the people who are running. What I need to say finally is that if you're a journalist covering a marathon, you are also running in the marathon. If you are not, then you are not covering the marathon. And running doesn't mean that you'll be physically running. But even if you are on the back of a motorbike, you have to be mentally alert throughout the course of the race to get the best possible coverage for the marathon. And I'm glad that um, the organizers are starting to uh, arrange on the high table people who look fit. They need to start running marathons themselves because if you cannot run a marathon, you should not be presiding over marathons. Yes. <laughs> You'll be surprised to know that um, Mr. Olapani has a very fast time. He um, <laughs> was at the Dubai Marathon uh, over the weekend and <laughs> yeah, um, you have to see him when he's in his uh, running shoes. Thank you very much for those insightful um, comments. Um, before we allow you to go, we know you have a very busy schedule. And one of the things that has been introduced um, for this year's marathon is now. Let me talk for you also. Oh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen of the media. I like to say, ladies and gentlemen of the media, because we need to stop the sex thing in the media. So, thank you very much, gentlemen and ladies of the media. If the men don't like it, join the marathon. But, um, let me first of all say um, the initiative of having this seminar is timely. Um, extremely important. As you read from my very good friend and brother, known from my university days, way back, um, it is an extremely important aspect of a road race, <coughs> having the media to support fully in terms of every aspect of the race. I've already said that every marathon in the world is a media event. And you will be ridiculing the media at your own peril. You must give respect to the media. You must both, both new media, old media, um, photojournalists, digital journalists. You must put everyone together and give them the respect that they deserve. And that's why this seminar is extremely important to us. And we thank you all for coming out. Just a few days, um, we we the Dubai Marathon. We have this thing with both the Dubai Marathon and a few North American marathons where um, our initial, we have decided that for this marathon to grow at the pace we want it to grow, we must continue to go out to learn. And of course, bring people like runners like Shore to also give their own insights for us to be able to tie our approach to the best marathons in the world. We've never for once said we live in a utopian world. Hence, when we see these mistakes, we are quick to get on top of them and correct them. I'll give you a typical example. We did have black spots in the first marathon. Shirel was spotted. But I'm sure because he didn't run the last two marathons, he did not notice the huge improvement that we have achieved in all of those areas. So much so that this year, we're having over 2,000 North Americans registered coming to run 
and over 4,000 people from 58 countries registered coming to run. It is the biggest. <laughs> as much as we are still on the learning curve, it is the biggest one day tourist attraction in Nigeria today. I challenge the way to debate on that. And that is because we've been quick to pick out our weaknesses. In doing our SWOT analysis, we've also picked out the threats. Because the truth is, we do not do this marathon well. And something goes wrong. All your initiative guys with it. So you must learn. But we'll be able to correct it. I was just telling the nephew, a man I respect a lot. So last year, he gave us a report as the athlete representative. It was a scaling report. He took his money to the cleaners, took me to the cleaners. I think he only spent my brand manager that I post as the best brand manager in Nigeria, arguably. But he took us to the cleaners. You and I would agree. But he did it in a very objective, in a very simplistic way for us to see the folly of what we were doing. So what have we done this year? We brought him on board again, again to be the active representative with a focus of correcting those things he pointed out. And I believe the answer is better for it. I have no doubt that we're organizing the best of the marathon since we started. But this seminar, the focus of the seminar cannot be lost on us. One of the things pointed out to us by experts that came from um, Estonia, Ukraine, and uh, Lithuania, uh, Azerbaijan, like six of them last year, who are people who have been around the world to monitor road races. And the very equipped information we got from an FBO's classmate, Alessio Ponzi, who is the head of road races in the world, I don't believe. If that man does not approve your race, your race is rubbish. One thing they pointed out out to us was the start area and the finish area. This seminar is actually to capture the essence of a very clean start with waves, which is an area where we need the media to help us explain to Nigerians that the elite runners and people like Shore with time must go before you guys. It's not that anybody wants to cheat for any part. In fact, I was shocked to see that Dubai the elite runner left one hour before the other runners were allowed. It is the way it's done everywhere in the world. And the second wave will be people like Shorel with timing. Then the third will be people like me, like Mokule Salami with Big Tommy, who are only in it. <laughs> who are only in it for the fun of it, to have a laugh. Marathons are about lifestyle. So what to appeal to the media? We've gotten a lot of stick from you guys with regards to segregating a group of the media from the other. I'm paying that on Oni's on here today and Boja. These are two new media guys who are very opinionated and ordinarily will say we've not done this right. Would always point it out to us. And I think one of the things that pointed out to us was that cameramen, according to them, were harassed during the last marathon. But they were not. Everywhere in the world, my friend here will agree with me, there's only one flagship camera on the team standing in front of the run. Only one. I don't know if it was you said I had a struggle with me last year. It looks like you. But I had a major struggle appealing to this cameraman. And they refused to leave. Guess what happened when the wheelchair gets started rolling? Who was on the finish with us? You were there. What happened was that one of the wheelchair guys rolled in and turned the guy's head into his And we had to rush that gentleman to the hospital. That is one of the hazards of not doing it properly. That was a failure on the part of the organizers and on the part of the photo millions and photo journalists who ordinarily ought to have applied the rules the way it ought to be applied. And I'm happy my brother here has pointed it out that they are a sophistication that needs to apply to um, getting this thing done. So please, on the start area, we want it as clean as possible. We have asked Mr. Kali to strategically accredit 
photojournalist for the start. I've also given accreditation to photojournalists for the finished area. I appeal to you. She already spoke about security. We are, we are hard on security this year. It's election year. And we are, we are serious about security this year. Even members of the organizing committee without all access are restricted. And if you are caught in an area where you are not meant to be, you'll be taken away by the police or security. It's done everywhere in the world. Last year, a girl ran for America, ran with an American passport, jumped on the stage and said um, she ran as a Nigerian. When every documentation we have showed her as running for America. When the year before, she had won $4,000 as an American runner, I paid for more. But what did the media do to us? They took us to the cleaners that we wanted to deprive a Nigerian from winning without getting the facts. So this year, the civilian security will do their job. The police security will do their job. In America, that girl would have been arrested for fraud. She would have been thrown off the stage. In the UK, why should we raise American and British? <laughs> In the UK, she would have been thrown. No, so why should we why should we used to live in America for political reasons? <laughs> I am British. I don't hide that. But the truth is, where he comes from and where I come from, the police will do their job. But priority is given to the media. But we are appealing that please, if you are not accredited for that area, please do not go there. So I saw something in Dubai that I went to check that they also have in New York. The media um, pavilion. pavilion for journalists, we have failed totally. And I can tell you from beginning, we have even failed before. I can tell you from beginning, we have even failed before the commencement of this and today's event. But we've learned a lesson. We saw how the media pavilion is organized. The media pavilion is as important as the VVIP pavilion, where large screen TVs, where all equipment, internet facilities must be put in place for those who are not photojournalists, so that they don't run into the running line of athletes and they don't run into the mixed area, the non mixed area of every other person. But that is not the fault of the media, it is the fault of I, the organizer. And we have noticed that and we're working hard on it. Next year, by the service of God, I assure you, the place of the media will be put where they deserve, and you deserve the best. Thank you very much for coming to this. Let me just say uh, that, uh, honorable, this year we are having a proper media pavilion for journalists with internet, TV, and everything. So, the voice is correct. And secondly, uh, I'm not I'm not making a case for my friend, but the guy that reported that Apple story. Uh, no, I said that. Media. I didn't mention it. Yeah. So <laughs> we're we sacked. We lost the show. All right, now the media deserves the best and the very best they would get. Um, before we go, like I told you, um, Shore is going for another interview. Um, I in would recognizing the best of journalists and reportage for this marathon. Um, an award has been instituted and to further encourage journalists to do their best as far as covering this marathon is concerned. And today we'll be having the main winners for the um, for the IOP GT. We'll be having the main award for the IOP GT um, Journalist Award. I'll be calling on um, Mr. Jaware and Mr. Lopate to come out and do the first presentation. Um, we have the winners for the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have And access one, please. I'm a representative of Yes. Okay, sorry, Mr. Moyo, you uh, would like to have it outside here too. Hello, this week I want.
So the first award uh, goes to so that's the category of the Ayode Jinkune and Me Tinubu Award. I hope that's not Bola Tinubu. No, okay. This is good. Because I'm on nothing wrong right now. I don't know why you're doing it. Uh, so the winner is uh, Solomon Ajuziogu. Solomon Ajuziogu, where are you, please, sir? Come forward, man. Good job. Yeah, I'm so proud. Thank you. Let's do. Congratulations. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Happy Hello. Solo. Uh, Solo. 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 Solo was on TBC. Solo was on TBC. Solo was on Thank you very much. Um, of course, this year's next year's going to be bigger. Um, we intend to have more categories and more women. Gentlemen and ladies, for you to know that we do really appreciate the media, this has come to us as an input to God. I want to join the media team to also present specially the race organizer award for the best journalist in not just marathon and athletics. And not just marathon, but athletics all encompassing. And I've seen many people that have been for a five hundred dollar cash prize right now. The best of charts of the internet. Congratulations, Mr. Nigeria they use radio where they turn the knob.